One flap of a butterfly's wing in Brazil would be enough to cause a hurricane in Indonesia. Edward Norton Lorenz 1893 Kyoto, Japan Young lawyer Henry Stimson and his wife Mabel White are on their honeymoon in Kyoto. The newlyweds are stunned by the colorful oriental city and its ancient history. They will remember this visit for the rest of their lives. May 11, 1945, Los Alamos, USA. A special US Army committee makes a list of priority targets for atomic bombings. Kyoto is top on the list as the largest industrial center in Japan. Pointing to the city's large cultural significance, the Minister of Defense, Henry Stimson, crosses it out from the list personally. This makes Hiroshima the main target for the US Army. Next in line at risk of bombing is the town of Kukura. August 9, 1945, Japan the crew of the U.S. Air Force B-29 bomber is given a specially important order by the commanders. The military arsenal in Kakura must be razed to the ground. A state-of-the-art bomb, more powerful than any used before, is loaded on board the aircraft for the mission. However, the town is enveloped in a fog so thick that the crew cannot distinguish the target. The aircraft captain Charles Sweeney takes a decision to fly on to the town of Nagasaki. Thus some sentimental reminiscences of 50 years back and an ordinary weather event affected the destinies of millions of people. And this story is just one of a great multitude of examples where seemingly small events may give rise to major consequences, incredible in their scale. This phenomenon is commonly perceived as the butterfly effect. But in reality, it is actually just a part of a big field of science known as chaos theory. In order to have a clearer insight into the correlation between small arthropods and destructive weather events, let's travel back to the recent past. In 1961, mathematician and meteorologist Edward Lorenz attempted to forecast the behavior of atmospheric flows by means of computer modeling. The scientist assumed that thanks to new computing capabilities, he would be able to predict the weather with an unprecedented accuracy. However, the results of the calculations baffled the scientist. In order to try to speed up the calculation process, Lorenz divided it into stages so that the final results of the previous stage would be the starting conditions for the one coming next. Some of the resulting figures were slightly rounded up by the computer. This was so negligible that it was not supposed to have any significant impact on the final answer. Or so the scientist thought. However, in reality it turned out that the results of uninterrupted and stage-by-stage -stage calculations differed dramatically. Later studies revealed that the system of equations Lorenz was trying to solve was inadequate for atmospheric processes modeling. Still, as is often the case in science, a misformulated task proved to be a step to an amazing and unexpected discovery. In his search for answers, the mathematician found that all possible solutions of the system group around two conventional positions which he dubbed attractors. If every solution were to be represented by a dot in a 3D coordinate system, they eventually form a shape reminiscent of a butterfly's wings. Interestingly, the slightest change of any initial parameter may sharply transfer the final calculation result from one wing to the other. In fact, Lorenz was not the first to discover an effect like that. Similar ideas were expressed by German philosopher Johann Fichte and French mathematician Henri Poincaré in their works. Be it as it may, it was Lorenz who transformed the annoying error of mathematical modeling into a potent and elaborate theory capable of offering answers to many questions. 
It goes without saying that hundreds of scientists would have contributed to the notion of chaos in the decades that followed, and the theory itself has come a long way. Its mechanisms can be applied to describe such complex phenomena and processes as turbulent flows, evolution of biological species, social interactions and stock exchange quotes. The laws of chaos define the movement of celestial objects and explosions of stars, the birth of empires and the demise of continents. And in order to get to the bottom of these factors and regularities, first and foremost, the notion of chaos has to be defined from the point of view of science. First of all, it should be noted that any chaotic structure is subject to rather rigid and clear physical laws, but they are so complex that the behavior of a system appears to be unpredictable. It is for a reason that structures like that are also known as deterministic chaos, with reference to their behavior being predefined. This is the principal feature that distinguishes them from stochastic systems, which are based on truly random events. If a chaotic system's behavior is supervised several times, the initial conditions being absolutely identical, it will react in the same manner. As for a structure based on pure chance, meanwhile, the result will never be the same. For example, experiments show that the decay of unstable nuclei in a sample of radioactive material occurs exclusively by chance. We can calculate the approximate number of atoms transforming within a specified period of time, but at the current stage of technological development, it is impossible to predict the precise time a given nucleus is supposed to decay. The exact mathematical definition of chaos sounds like this. A system has to exhibit non-linear characteristics, be globally stable, but at the same time have at least one oscillating equilibrium point. At the same time, the system's fractal dimension must not be less than 1.5. It's quite a challenge to get one's head around this convoluted phrase, unless one is a professional mathematician, of course, rather than a layman. In simple words, it may be expressed by three principal points. Firstly, the system has to be non-linear. Let's imagine we're influencing a structure in one way or another and getting a predictable feedback. It is logical to assume that after several interactions of this kind, the resulting change will equal the sum of all single ones. However, it isn't the case for a non-linear system, and as a result, the structure will change more or less than we estimated. This was the effect encountered by Lorenz in his calculations, which prompted him to carry on with his studies. Secondly, a dynamic chaos system must be responsive to the initial conditions, that is to exhibit this very butterfly effect. This means that no matter how tiny and almost completely negligible change of the initial conditions may be, it may force the system to develop in a completely different manner. Thirdly, as a system develops, its separate parts are supposed to overlap and interact with each other. Such interactions are usually not taken into account in classical physics. However, quite often it proves to be a grave omission. It is keeping track of multifaceted influence that makes chaos theory models so elaborate and so like real structures. Let's think 13.8 billion years back. Just a few quanta of time would have elapsed since the occurrence of the hypothetical Big Bang. There is neither matter nor energy around us as we know them and the four fundamental interactions are interconnected by one bizarre force. The physical laws known to us are not yet applicable at this point. However, other ones are working instead, which are just as rigid and which predefine the system's future development. At the same time, a tiniest change in any point of the germinating universe is capable of changing its future completely, whatever the reason for this tiny change. It appears that our reality was literally born actually thanks to chaos in the scientific sense of the word. Now let's imagine what it's like about a million years later. The space of that time would have become more like what we know it to be, although there aren't any stars or planets around. There are only countless clouds of primary hydrogen floating around the young universe. The hydrogen is exposed to gravity forces pressure. This forms gravity centers which are soon to become the first stars. These gas clusters are splashed about quite irregularly, 
with no system to speak of, they are also massive enough to mutually exert gravitational influence. At the same time, with any of the protostars moved aside, or with its mass slightly altered, these changes will influence not only its own evolution, but that of its immediate neighbors as well. This means that the laws of chaos continue to rule the universe. In the course of billions of years that followed, primary stars burned out and exploded, saturating the universe with heavy elements. New stars were born from clusters of hydrogen, with clouds of cosmic dust near them swirling in gigantic vortices and forming protoplanetary disks. It is easy to see the already familiar patterns of chaotic movement and interaction in their structure. And this is how four and a half billion years ago the solar system was born. This tale could go on indefinitely. Supernovas, formation of celestial bodies, atmospheric phenomena and ocean currents. Wherever we cast our eyes, there are examples of deterministic chaos around us all over the place. Its laws determine how children turn out when they grow up, how the economy develops and how society changes. The entire universe is permeated with myriads of connections and every one of us is part of this system. And it looks that a tiny butterfly in a remote corner of the planet has just flapped its wing. <laughs>